Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew. This is the channel where I'm bringing you tips and tricks to help you become a better live sound engineer or to run better live events, whether that's concerts, conferences, or worship ceremonies. All the stuff you find here will be really helpful. Now, if you've not run into them yet, it's absolutely certain that you're gonna run into delay speakers. That is, delay hangs. And even if you're mixing exclusively front of house sound or monitors, it's really important that you know how these work so that you can identify problems if they pop up. So in this video, we're going to take a look at delay fills. We're gonna look at what they are, why and when to use them, how to calculate the delay time, and then a short tutorial on M32 mixer to dial it all in. But what you learn in this video will be applicable to all mixers. It's the background knowledge behind the technique that is important. So without further ado, let's dive in. So what is a delay speaker or a delay hang or a delay fill or just delays? Basically, they're speakers that are set further back in the room from your main PA and their main purpose is to supplement that main PA. So they help reinforce it over longer distances. They help to provide clarity and intelligibility to all the seats, even at the back of the house or people standing right at the back of the venue. An important piece of background information here is that we don't lose frequencies evenly through the air as we play sound, right? We lose high frequencies disproportionately more than we lose low frequencies. So at the back of the room, you're going to hear a very muddy, unintelligible version of speech or lyrics or whatever it is that you're listening to if you're not using delay speakers in a large room. Of course, in smaller rooms, this isn't the same problem. So they help as well with more evenly distributed sound in a large room. If you want to hear things clearly at the back of a large room, you need to play the speakers very, very loud at the front. So you end up with really loud sound at the stage, medium loud sound in the middle and loud enough at the back. And the result is that people at the front are getting absolutely blasted and people at the back are maybe comfortable, maybe they can't hear properly. So another advantage then of running delay speakers is that you can run your main PA speakers at a lower volume than you would without the delay speakers. So that gives you a more even coverage across the whole venue. Your sound pressure levels, your volume is similar at the front and at the back, or at least closer to one another. As well as that, you get lots of other benefits like your game before feedback on microphones on the stage is going to be higher because you're not playing those speakers at the same high volume as you were before. But let's talk about why it's called a delay speaker and why we need to introduce a delay into the system. So sound moves at about 340-ish meters per second. 343, I think, is the number you'll find if you Google it. Uh, I don't know what that is in feet. Sorry. Uh, I'm sure Google will be able to tell you if you look for it. Now, that's actually relatively slow compared to how quickly the sound moves from the mixer to the speakers. That's near instantaneous. The sound from the speakers beside the stage, your main PA, is going to take several milliseconds to travel the distance to the back of the room. You know, in about 15 meters, which is not a huge room, you're gonna find about 43 milliseconds of delay. That's noticeable, you will absolutely notice that. If you're standing at the back of the room and someone speaks into a microphone beside you, you notice this if you put headset microphones on people and test them, you will hear that delay. You'll hear the voice first and then the delay afterwards. So when we rig up these secondary speakers, these delay speakers, we need to tell them to wait for the main PA to catch up to them. And we use a little bit of maths or formula to work out roughly how long they need to wait for in milliseconds until that sound there reaches them. So your main speakers fire off, right? And then it takes them 43 milliseconds to travel 15 meters. So if you have delay speakers there, you need to tell them to wait 43 milliseconds so that that sound wave catches up and then they play in tandem. So problem one is that you'll get a hilarious slap back echo if you travel far enough. That's problem one without using a delay. Problem two is actually phase interference. Even if you have a shorter delay, you might find that certain frequencies start to have phase problems or comb filtering can occur throughout the frequency spectrum and create this like hollow sound. And we don't want that. So we want our speakers to be in sync. Let's talk about calculating this delay. 
So in this video, we're going to look at a kind of rough and ready way of calculating and roughing in a delay speaker, right? And that is using a laser distance measure. It is possible to use a sort of two channel measurement like smart or something like that to perfectly align the delay, align the speakers using the phase chart, right? But I'm not going to get into that now because I feel like you don't want to drop a thousand dollars won't ever on smart just to solve your first delay speaker problems. Leave a comment down below if that's something you would like to see. So I said we're going to use a laser distance measure, right? You just buy a cheap one. It doesn't need to be super accurate because we're not going to be using the exact values that we find from this laser distance measure, right? I threw out the speed of sound earlier, but that is the speed of sound at sea level and at 20 degrees Celsius. The likelihood of it being exactly at sea level and exactly at 20 degrees Celsius is pretty low. And if you have a look at the differences in speed of sound, affected by just temperature, you find that there's actually quite a lot of variance there. We're not going to be using this exact number, but we are going to be using it as a guide. But basically you get your laser distance measure and you stand at your delay speakers. You pop up on the cone or pretty much at the cone, point it at your main PA speakers, and then you measure the distance between your delay and your main PA speakers. Now you have the distance in meters, hopefully, between your delay speaker and your main PA speakers. And we can just use an equation to find out the delay in milliseconds. And that equation is time is equal to distance over speed, right? So our time in milliseconds is equal to our distance in meters divided by the speed of sound at sea level, 343 meters per second, right? That gives us an answer in seconds. So we need to multiply that by 1000 to move to milliseconds, which is the realm that we're working in here. Really easy. You can also be very lazy and just Google it. You know, type in PA delay calculator, you'll get an equation where you just punch the numbers in. It's good to know this equation in case, you know, you're, I don't know, on a mountain with no phone signal, but 90% of the time you can probably just fire it in an equation online. Now that we have the delay, let's look at how to set it up on the mixer. So normally when you have a small PA, you turn your fader up, it goes to the master, you turn your master up and then it's sent out to the speakers. On this mixer, it's output seven and eight are connected to the main speakers. When we want to add an extra set of speakers and delay them, we need to think about using matrices. So I'm going to set up two stereo matrices. You might think about just using one and using your main fader for the PA and the matrix for the delays, but then you run into problems with like separation of processing and so on. It's just good sort of mixer hygiene to use a matrix for your main output and a matrix for your delayed output. So I'll just navigate down to the matrix button and I'll select my matrix, you know, I'll go in, I'll name it. And I need to make sure also that these are stereo. So I've named them already. Uh, I won't take you through that. I select the matrix, I'll go to home and then I will click on this link button here using this first encoder. And that allows me to stereo link matrix one and two. And I'll do exactly the same with matrix three and four. Now I need to make sure that they come out of the correct output. So I'll press the routing button up here and I'll navigate over to the output page using these encoders here. As I said, before I was using seven and eight from my main left and right, that won't change, but I need to change where the signal is coming from because it's set up now to take signal from this master fader and send it out to the speakers. But I want this master fader to pass sound to these matrices and then to the speakers. I want matrix one and two to come out seven and eight instead of this main fader here. So I navigate to output seven, and then I'll just use these encoders to change the category to matrix and the output signal to matrix one. And then click the encoder to assign. I'll do the same with output eight to matrix and then to matrix two, click the encoder. I want my extra speakers to come out on separate outputs. So I will navigate to output five. I'll just use five and six. So I've got delays on five and six, main on seven and eight. Output five, I will select matrix and I will navigate to matrix three, click assign. Same for output six, that will be matrix four because matrix three and four are my delayed signals. Now we need to make sure that sound goes to these delay speakers. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our master fader, because remember our faders normally are still mixing to this master fader, but it's no longer being routed to an output, to a speaker. So we select our master fader and we go to home and then we page over to the right to sense. 
down here you'll see I've got level one level for matrix one and two and level for matrix three and four. Also five and six, we're not using them. So I will turn the dials up so that I get to about zero, which is full on matrix one and two. And I will do the same on matrix three and four. And you see now that I have the signal which goes to this master coming in on these two matrix outputs. So I can now turn these up and I have separate adjustment of the level of my main speakers and my delay speakers, but I still have full control on the master. So the master controls everything, but I have a finer level of detail here if I need to bring or bring up or decrease something. So now we can punch in our delay, right? So we're going to go back to our routing. We're going to find our delay outputs and we're going to use this encoder over here to fine tune our delay. Once we have our delay time, we're going to do one very important step. We're going to walk from the stage to the delay speakers and listen, and we're going to see how it sounds. Because this number here is an equation. It doesn't reflect reality perfectly. The numbers in this equation are based on 20 degrees Celsius at sea level. And I'll tell you, it's quite unlikely that your venue is going to be exactly 20 degrees Celsius at sea level. So we need to listen and then we fine tune our delay based on what we hear. The next thing we need to do is we need to grab our EQ. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my EQ on. I'm going to select the low cut on the EQ mode on the low band. And I'm going to dial that in a bit because our main PA is still playing full blast and bass is not attenuated the same way that high frequencies are by the air. So we lose a lot of high frequencies over distance, but we don't lose as much bass. That means that we're replacing the high frequencies with our delay, but we don't need to replace the low frequencies. So we cut some of that out. The final adjustment that you really need to make is the level, because you want these delay speakers to be invisible. You don't want someone to stand beside them and go, oh, there's the delay speaker. You want them to look at the stage and see the performance or the conference or whatever it is, and you want their attention to be focused on that. So level and EQ are very important. As I said before, I showed you on an M32, but the technique applies to everything, right? It's the how you do it on the mixer is not what's important because every mixer is different and you need to learn how to deal with that. So if you don't know how to do it on the mixer that you have, just look up the manual. You will find out how to set delays on an output. Usually in the output section somewhere, there will be an ability to turn on a delay and set the time in milliseconds. You might also use a system processor or an amp with DSP. Again, same principle applies. The channels which are feeding the delay speakers need to be delayed by the amount that you find out. So in short, delay speakers are used to supplement the main PA. They let you have clarity and intelligibility at the back of the room, and they also allow you to run the main speakers at a lower volume, which can give you more gain before feedback. That also results in a more even distribution of sound levels throughout the room. We need to delay them because sound moves relatively slowly through air, and it becomes noticeable quite quickly if we have multiple speakers playing. We do this by creating two matrix pairs, sending essentially the same thing out of both of them, but delaying the output on the mixer. Alternatively, we might use DSP on an amplifier. And we use a laser measure and an equation to find out the time in milliseconds that we need to delay the speakers by. I hope that one was really helpful. It's certainly really important, I think, for every sound engineer to know how to do that. It's not particularly difficult, and it's just sort of something that should be in your bag of tricks. If it was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. That lets me know that you liked it. And I'll leave links down below to templates for setting up matrices for this, so that if you can't be bothered doing it yourself, you can just throw my templates in and you'll get it ready to rock just how I set it up. That's all for now, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.